Well, I want to thank everyone for coming out uh, this morning to help celebrate really uh, the rebirth of this Mulder Square neighborhood. Today at about uh, 2 o'clock, I believe, we're going to close uh, on this home. And this home will, uh, will be uh, in private hands, uh, representing the first purchase of a new and affordable home within uh, this, uh, this, this in in incredible um, renovation project that we see here, see here in Mulder Square. Now, it wasn't that long ago that I stood with the senator who uh, is here with us and we sw swung sledgehammers Absolutely. on the uh, on the steps of uh, those buildings which are which have now been demolished and are gone and which will eventually be uh, replaced with infill. It was also not long ago that I stood with Mr. Sengor Manns and the Housing Authority and we did an earth shaking, literally jumping up and down to celebrate uh, the uh, the clearing of those lots. and. If you look around, you can see just how transformative uh, these collective projects are. Um, uh, I'm pleased to say that the uh, Housing Authority, with their uh, 48 new un units in three different locations, are on track to be completed by November of this year. Um, it's really uh, amazingly transformative. Right here, not only do we have the first renovated uh, and already sold a new home, but soon will be the property next door in a similar manner. And Gary tells me uh, he uh, is also planning to do two more houses in this block right, uh, right there, both of which uh, uh, he already has under contract. So in the next six months or so, we look to see those, uh, those being completed. Um, Tri-County, uh, not only is the Housing Authority putting in over $16 million of investment in their projects, Tri-County Housing over $2 million, um, Brethren Housing Corporation already having invested $1.4 million, um, and uh, the City of Harrisburg is well underway with our planning for streetscape improvements, including new traffic designs, new streetscape, new trees, stormwater management, lighting, um, and uh, green infrastructure, along with, in partnership, uh, CRW. We're going to have another uh, community meeting this spring. That'll probably be the final meeting in the planning, and we look to make those infrastructure improvements in 2019. So really, every, every few months here as we move along, you're going to see continued investment and development all uh, culminating in what we, uh, what we think will be a transformative critical mass. Now let me tell you a little bit about how exciting this home was because I've, I've spoken to the, the realtors and the agents for the, for the young buyer, the young family that's going to be moving into this house this afternoon. But when all was said and done after all the renovations and how beautiful this is, do you know what the mortgage on this property is going to be? It's going to be under $500 a month including taxes and insurance. That is incredible. And compare that with, uh, I can tell you that uh, the rental options, much, much higher than that. Um, uh, the, uh, the particular person in question, not only paying for more, looking at more, looking at rents in the seven, $800 range for something not even as nice or as comparable as what we have here. Another thing I want to highlight is the role that the city's LERTA program is playing in making this project affordable for the homeowner. As you know, we have a 10-year, 100% abatement on residential improvements in the city of Harrisburg. So that meant that, uh, that basically, despite the over hundreds of, over $100,000 of renovation that went into the property, the property's uh, assessment was essentially capped at what it was before that. And would anyone like to guess the total amount of Harrisburg City property tax that the property owner will be paying on this house moving forward for each of the next 10 years? Well, $45 a year is the answer. 45 because they still pay a little bit on the land. $45 a year. That's not per month. That's per year. Uh, and it makes, uh, it makes the entire package affordable. Um, and, uh, and basically, uh, th this, is, uh, this is just a, a, a wonderful story. So um, I'm sure there are going to be more questions about uh, other things that are happening. We have a ribbon to cut, but I want to uh, hand things over now to Gary Lanker, who is really the mastermind of this project here with Tri-County uh, uh, Housing. Thank you. Gary. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. No, really, you were the mastermind. I remember back in uh, early 2015, I had a meeting uh, with your, some of your senior staff, Roy Chris, Brian Davis from the Redevelopment Authority, 
and Jackie Parker, and I was told that Tri-County Housing, who is a designated community housing development organization in the city, and we also do work in Dolphin County and Cumberland County, that the focus was going to be in this neighborhood based on the improvements that PennDOT did with the Mulberry Street Bridge over $12 million, it was going to be, this was going to be the focus. And I did a walking tour of this neighborhood with those folks and I'm happy to tell you in, uh, in a short couple of years we have acquired 11 of the identified 12 properties that were designated for us. And as the mayor indicated, we're going to be shortly starting on three more uh, rehabilitations, 245, 235, and 237 Homo Street, all for home ownership. Uh, across the street, we have new construction envision. But the key to all of this is the LERTA. For this particular buyer and those that are following, to be able to have minimal property taxes. So I thank the city council, I thank the, thank the administration for their forward thinking in doing that. So uh, I really appreciate that. I want to de uh, recognize I have a few of our board members here. And again, our mission is to promote, develop, affordable housing for low to moderate income persons and families. And uh, our organization is in its 28th year of existence and we have uh, created nearly 700 units of affordable housing in the city, Dolphin, Cumberland and Perry County during that tenure. Something that uh, I and my board is very proud of. I wanna go through the crowd here. I see Ray Spencer as one of our board members. I see Sangor Manns, one of our advisors. Uh, Jennifer Wintermeyer, the Executive Director of Community Action on our board. Shirley Blanton, she's a resident of the community, serves on the board. Uh, Brian Davis with the Redevelopment Authority is one of our uh, advisors. Pete Kaler, another uh, uh, member of my board that lives in the community. And uh, Crystal Brown with Brethren Housing, she also serves on the board. So I thank, thank all the board members and advisors here. I also want to recognize uh, Sheila Dow Ford with Impact Harrisburg. She's going to see, say a few words and Wanda Williams, City Council President. We thank you for being here. With that said, I'm going to ask Senator DeSanto. He's kind enough to take time out of his busy schedule to meet with us and he has a few words to say and then we'll be happy to answer any or all questions. Senator. Thank you, Gary. Well, thank you very much for being here. My role is really uh, supportive in this. I'm happy to support the mayor and the housing authority and the great work they're doing up here in Tri-County Housing, but I also don't want to forget the faith-based organizations that are working in the community really trying to drive supportive change. My career for the last 35 years has been in real estate development and construction, and I take special interest in these projects. As the mayor said, we demolished those buildings last uh, summer. I walked in this building, they were just finished gutting it and started to do the new framing and it's just, I get so much satisfaction from seeing this kind of positive development within the city and I uh, just do what I can lending support with the state and trying to uh, get recap, RCAP grants and do whatever else I can to lend the support because for the last 35 years I said I've been dedicated working with Habitat within the city trying to develop uh, affordable decent clean housing for the working poor so thank you for having me and thank you mayor and Gary for all your support You're Senator, leadership. Sheila would you like to please come forward on behalf of Impact Harrisburg we were the recipient of a three hundred fifty thousand dollar Impact Harrisburg grant that's going to support the renovations, rehabilitation of 235 and 245 Homo, and we're very appreciative of that. So Thank please. Thank you, Gary. Thank you so much. Good morning. Bring you greetings on behalf of Impact Harrisburg. We're a nonprofit that was developed solely for the purpose of enhancing economic development within the city of Harrisburg and really looking to create better communities. I'm very pleased and proud to be a part of this project. Uh, with the partners who stand behind me and beside me. This is really exciting. Home ownership is a very important step in the life of anyone. This is the kind of work Impact Harrisburg wants to be known for. We're also partners, I should say, with Community Action Commission. So the whole Malder Square project, of which this is a part, this Hummel Street project is a part of that. This, will, this is such an exciting time for our city. We're so pleased and proud to be a part of this. One of my board members, Jackie Parker, is here. Jackie, I wanted to acknowledge her and the other board members who have really worked diligently to take the 13.1 and some change 
that we receive for the purpose of enhancing our communities and really leveraging those dollars through partnerships such as this one, Gary, and such as that which we have with Community Action Commission and with a whole variety of other partners throughout this city, the city of Harrisburg, the Redevelopment Authority. And in a few weeks, you'll hear some more news about us as we bring online the loan program, but that's for another time. I just wanted to say thank you. And to the homeowner, bon voyage. Thank you. <laughs> Just a brief word on the economics here. I think it's uh, it's incredibly important to know that you can purchase uh, a home in the city of Harrisburg and end up with a mortgage for under $500 a month. That's an extraordinary bargain. One of the things that uh, impressed me is that uh, this house sold for almost $70,000. And prior to the renovation of this building, the average home sale in this neighborhood was about half that, about $35,000. So we are slowly um, raising the property values of homeowners in this neighborhood. And what that's going to do is it's also going to allow people to come in and make the type of investment into fixing up these properties, which is really necessary. Um, would you put $50,000 into renovating a home if you knew you could sell it for $75,000 uh, and purchase it off the uh, repository for just a few hundred dollars? I think you would. Um, would you do that if you could only sell it for $30,000? Probably not. So while, while this is a focused um, uh, effort on the part of both the city and Impact Harrisburg, I should note that this particular project was funded by CDBG dollars. We've now uh, we're able to leverage that into an Impact Harrisburg grant to fund the building next door. But slowly and surely, our hope is that we're going we're gonna to leverage private investment to come in and do the same thing. So if you're out there looking for a great investment opportunity in the city of Harrisburg, um, come see us. We will help uh, identify properties that are very inexpensive uh, to purchase and that can be renovated and, most importantly today, can be sold to homeowners for a very reasonable uh, reasonable price, seventy thousand dollars. Five, four, three, two, one. Oh, yeah. sold. Sold. Basically, with the uh, funding that we receive from the city, the home and the CDBG funding, we are limited to people of an income level of eighty percent or below of the median family income. And just to give you an idea, a family of three surprisingly can earn up to $53,800. So, you know, although that term is low to moderate income, we're talking about working families, and uh, those are the type of folks. So 80% or less median family income, single person, 41,850, and I have these numbers and I'm happy to share with you, but that's what it is. <laughs> family of three is $53,800. That's a gross income. And, and that's what they can earn to qualify. Which means that the majority of people living in Harrisburg would qualify. That's right. So these are, but they're listed like in the real estate market. Oh, sure. Yes. Oh, yes, yes. Yeah. We, we, uh... I know I, I, I know I spoke to the uh, buyer's agent who is here and uh, it was uh, it sold very quickly I mean which did. is which is impressive uh, I think partly due to the fact that uh, the renovation job was done so well and uh, partly due to the fact that with uh, with the alert and with everything else the package put together is so inexpensive literally cheaper than renting uh, home ownership possibilities existing here in the city so um, we can, you know, I, I, th I think perhaps people will be lining up to purchase the building next door, and that's that's definitely the hope. Yeah. yeah. Any other private sector investment or like people kicking the tires? With yeah, we have seen some. Renovation. We haven't we haven't seen um, uh, as much yet because I think uh, Gary is really the pioneer here, and uh, but I think others will follow. Again, I think uh, lifting the uh, the real estate value of the homes in this neighborhood is is part of what this project is all about, and that will allow others to uh, others to follow and to make the economics work. I, I think we will. Uh, I hope we will begin to see a lot of these abandoned buildings uh, see reinvestment, turn into uh, homes for working class families um, that desperately need them. I and mean, we are we are a short walk from the downtown. Uh, we know about a lot of the uh, increase in business and uh, economic activity. Um, this would be a wonderful neighborhood in which to live and be able to walk to work.
And that's partly why we decided to focus on, on Mulder Square. Okay? Yep. That was kind of my question. Just, uh, what do you hope that this and these products do for this particular? Well, uh, we're literally uh, filling in the gaps where where there once were vacant homes with uh, with new city residents, with families. We're rebuilding the city's population slowly, but we have to we have to fundamentally change a perception of the of the neighborhood, raise the 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 market value of the of the area. Um, I mean, if if, if you compare Driving, uh, driving into Mulder Square in, a, in another six months or so, once the Housing Authority has finished its three different signature projects, with uh, with what it looked like just say six months ago, um, it's it's a complete and utter transformation. It's a substantive one, bringing in many many new people, new families, new workers, new residents. Um, all of that will have a ripple effect. We're still at the early stages, but it continues it continues to build. You couple that with the uh, infrastructure and streetscape improvements, which the city is going to be doing thanks to the state funding through um, our RCAP grant and uh, you really have the complete package and I think more people like this homeowner uh, will come to Mulder Square and be amazed at what they see and see this as a, um, a really viable option for raising a family and uh, um, you know living in an urban setting and the other key is yeah. removal of blight you know across sure. the street here we had a five-unit row home that was burned out abandoned Lighted yep. and uh, you know that that was part of this project, getting removing that, and uh, we're going to be providing new construction eventually over there. So removal of blight is another key component. Now these houses were equally blighted, I would say, but they were they were able to be saved in part because of the good bones and the you know the just the the strong brick nature of, the, of many of these row homes. They weren't too far gone. So a combination of um, selective demolition of those that can't be saved and uh, infill new construction with uh, renovation of a lot of the, the quality housing stock is exactly what you want to see and so you've, you've, you've got it. Honestly, this house is um, it's, it's spacious, it has uh, one and a half baths, it has a, uh, you know, a, a concreted um, basement. It's, uh, it's as nice as any home in any neighborhood uh, in Harrisburg and I think people really um, uh, will begin to look again at the neighborhood and the housing stock as more and more begins to happen here. That's a good question. Uh, we're, we're right now we're focused on Mulder Square. I mean, this is a big neighborhood. We are we are we are essentially um, uh, 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 looking at, at many different blocks and a lot of different opportunity. But uh, but you're you're right. We'll we'll move from we'll move from this to uh, to other target areas in the future. Is the homeowner here? The homeowner is not here, but uh, they're closing at two o'clock. And, uh, uh, and I think we wanted to respect the privacy of, uh, of them to move in and get all the, the media out before they actually uh, were to move in.